Peace, family, and welcome to another edition of the Drake the Maniac podcast. This is Ayapo Yapa, the HDIC, that is, the head Drake Maniac in charge. And we're here to have conversations on how to get off this plantation. What do you do when nothing makes any sense? You look at the system of government that you're in, and those who wield the levers of power within it, and their actions don't line up with any expectations that we have. Excuse me. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure that you listeners are listening to the Drapedomaniac podcast on doiamedia.com. You are, right? We look at the police, and as they terrorize, harass, and murder our people, We're perplexed by what they do because, after all, they are here to quote-unquote protect and serve, aren't they? I often refer back to the words of Neely Fuller when he said, If you don't understand racism, white supremacy, everything that you do understand will only confuse you. I want to submit that that statement is not only true for understanding the system in which you've been thrown, but it also goes for the subsystems within the overall system of white supremacy. An election cycle is come and gone, and we watched as both Republicans and Democrats did absolutely nothing to relieve the nationwide pain of the regular people, especially black us. They watched and did nothing as the people were, and are, losing businesses, jobs, livelihoods, homes, marriages, and even their lives. How could they sit back and do nothing? Don't they realize that there will be some kind of backlash? Are they trying to lose their positions and seats? Do they not care that the people are angry and looking at them with contempt and that they have the power to turn it around and relieve the suffering? Again, if you don't understand racism, white supremacy, Everything that you do understand will only confuse you. The point, when dealing with white people destroying the lives of other white people, ultimately isn't the system of white supremacy per se, but it's about the perceptions we hold as they pertain to the people in power. We all have seen or been in situations where a person is behaving in ways that for the life of us, we can't figure out why they're acting or reacting the way they are. Whatever they're doing doesn't make any darn sense. I'm about to give you a key to understanding the actions of any person or any system. I'll start by giving you a thought process and then a situation. The thought process. The police are here to protect and serve. The situation. Our people are being gunned down with impunity, targeted, terrorized, and even when it is us who makes the phone calls, we who made the phone calls are likely to end up face down or either in cuffs or dead. Their brutality and violence toward us just doesn't add up. It doesn't make any sense. How can that be when the police are here to protect us and serve us? You can never make that make sense unless you shift your paradigm. Instead of holding in your mind that they're here to quote-unquote protect and serve, as has been drilled into us non-stop, and that when there is an incidence, it's because of some quote-unquote bad apple, replace it with this. The police are here to terrorize citizens, especially black people, to harm us in any way possible, and to kill us with little or no provocation and suffering no consequences for it. Furthermore, they are an occupying force in inner cities and are actually there to protect the lives and property of the wealthy or rich people, while missing no opportunity to hurt and destroy the lives of black people and to place as many as possible into the prison industrial complex, where they and their families can further suffer with the added benefit to them of enriching the system and those who run and own it. Now, replace that protect and serve with what I just said. If you adopt that viewpoint, and I mean really adopt it and let it sink in deep into your consciousness, as I have, 
then suddenly all the lights will come on and boom, everything they do, every act of violence, every act of terror, every act of murder, every act of harassment from stop and frisk to unnecessary traffic stops to planting of evidence will suddenly make perfect sense to you. But as long as you even remotely hold to the they're supposed to be here to protect and serve that has been hammered into us, then you will continue to be perplexed by their actions. Same thing for the government. If you believe we live in a democracy or a representative republic or representative democracy and that elected officials are quote-unquote civil servants who are supposed to represent the people, then nothing they do will ever begin to make any kind of sense to you, ever. But if you determine, as I have, that those at the highest levels of government and power, and I don't care who they are, are completely bought and paid for to the point that they literally could not do the right thing by the people if they wanted to. Please hear me. I'm going to say that again. They are so bought and paid for by banks, corporations, and big pharma, and so on, that they couldn't do the quote-unquote will of the people if they truly wanted to, which they don't. If you accept that they're a bunch of bought and paid for oligarchs who do the bidding of their corporate masters and that whatever they do is 100% based upon their own self-interest and that they have no regard for the people or the country, then suddenly everything they do will automatically make perfect sense to you. But if you want to believe that these entities actually have a soul and give a damn about the people who aren't wealthy, then once again, you will remain totally perplexed by everything that they do. I am never perplexed, nor surprised by anything these demons do. I will admit, I reach deeper levels of disgust consistently, but never, ever surprise or confusion, because I have already determined what they are and what motivates them. By the way, those who have listened to me for any amount of time know that I believe that most, if not all, quote-unquote pimp preachers are actually likely atheists. My reasoning is that anyone who actually believes in Yah, or God, some will say, and truly believe what is contained in the Bible, then there is no way that they would do the things they do, because their actions run absolutely counter to Scripture. By that same measure, I've come to this conclusion, and this is a conclusion that I've just come to recently, that the elected officials in the highest levels of the United States government, ironically, actually have no allegiance whatsoever to America, using the same rationale I use with pimp preachers. If they really cared about, and I'm talking about elected officials, if they really cared about the Constitution, freedom, liberty, and all the other BS they claim this country stands for, and if they really wanted the United States to be a strong world power, they would be doing the exact opposite of the things that they're doing in Washington right now. That also goes for corporations, banks, and so on that are headquartered in America. These oligarchs have no allegiance to any country. They consider themselves global citizens, and therefore the United States is just another source of resources and revenue to use until it's exhausted, and then they'll move on. I mean that for both the public and private sector, and the government. And add to that the fact that they actually have contempt for the people of this country. And don't think that they don't, because they believe that we're idiots. If they didn't think we were idiots, Barack Obama wouldn't have acted like he was drinking Flint tap water, and Nancy Pelosi wouldn't have been kneeling in Kenta cloth, and so on. With these symbolic gestures that mean nothing but show how stupid and shallow they think the people are, we must learn to know when we are being insulted. When you internalize that, 
than the decisions made in Washington that only benefit the wealthy and keep perpetual wars going while completely ignoring regular citizens as the country burns will make perfect sense to you. You won't like it, but you will not be confused or perplexed by it. These understandings will open up your minds to new ways of thinking and moving in the world in general and within this corrupt system specifically. One more quick point. Imagine you're someone who was counting on another stimulus check to help you get through the hard times the average Americans are now suffering through. Every day you listen to several YouTubers do reports on the status of the stimulus and whether you'll be getting another check or unemployment or rent relief or whatever. And day after day, week after week, month after month, nothing comes. Nothing. And when they, and I'm talking about elected officials, do talk about doing something, it's so small it won't really help the average person. It'll only help the wealthy. And you say to yourself over and over, they have to do something. They see us out here falling over a cliff. They see the entire country crashing and burning around them. They have to do something, even if it's just for their own purposes, like getting votes or staying in office. Wrong. The only thing you're right about is that they see the country crashing and burning down around them. Where you would be wrong is that you think they care that the country's crashing and burning. Like I said, their goals are purely based upon self-interest. Their plans are to let it burn, but to grab as much as they can before it burns down to the ground and then move on and just leave everyone else to sift through the rubble and to fight over the scraps and bones left on the ground. The takeaway? When the actions of a people or a system are confusing you, at some point you may want to consider changing your viewpoint and taking a look at it from a side that you might not have considered before. It may seem to be unthinkable, or too harsh, or too ugly. But that is where the truth will be. Sometimes we just don't want to view things in certain ways because we're fighting with all our might not to give in to cynicism. But I ask you this, what if cynicism is the key that can open you up to the reality of some things? No, one need not be cynical about everything. But sometimes cynicism can not only lead you to the reality of a person or a situation, but put an end to the confusion that keeps turning a thing over and over in your mind without conclusion, unable to reconcile what you believe and what is actually happening. For me, coming to these conclusions was liberating and have given me a direction and clarity of purpose that I lacked before, as well as a great hope for a positive future. Because before you can actually deal with a situation, you have to know what you're truly dealing with. I'll put it to you like this. What happens if you're going to a doctor and you want the doctor to help you and the doctor asks you different questions about what you're eating, what you're drinking, how you're sleeping and so on, and you don't give the doctor truthful information or accurate information, then they may prescribe something or they may uh, give you some advice and tell you what to do, but the advice that they give you will be based upon false information. And therefore, it in all likelihood won't help you. But if that doctor knows exactly what's going on with you based upon what you you truthfully told them, then they can give you a prescription or advise you or whatever and it'll be adequate and it will work for you. The same thing here. If we're thinking different things about the government, about the police, about different organizations or whatever, and the thoughts that we have don't match up with what they are actually doing or what they are actually about, then the ways that we move in the world in relationship to those things is always going to lead us either to a dead end or worse, disaster. But if you see a thing for what it is, then you know what to do about it. Or you can at least make some kind of a plan as to what to do about it in your own personal life and for that of your family. And so for me, that's the way I move in the world and that's the way I perceive things. 
And ultimately, I believe that it will lead me toward the goal of safety, security, and sanity for me and my family through separation. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this edition of the Drake the Maniac podcast. This is Ayapo Yapa, the HDIC. Yes, that is the head Drake Domaniac in charge. Praying for your peace, blessings, and safety. And until next Friday at this same time, I'll see you on the run. And thank you again for listening to the Drake Domaniac podcast. Tune in next week at doiamedia.com. D-O-E-A-I-A-M-E-D-I-A dot C-O-M. And again, we'll catch you on the run. Peace.